Thanks for pressing play. You're watching a brand new episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics, the show where we talk about the great new comics hitting the shelf. And some of them might not be great. We don't know because they haven't come out yet. So look forward to them. We have Excalibur Comics has two locations. Shreveport, Louisiana, which is where we are. We have a Facebook page to check out and a website. And then there's also one in Texarkana, Texas. And they have a Facebook page and the same website. Uh, if they're not on the screen, they're in the description. I'm sure. Yes. Or you can just Google us. Or duck duck go us. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so mm, top comics of the week. What's coming out? Tell me. Well. Oh, wait. I'm Olivia. I'm Sorry. Abby. Okay, top comics of the week. <laughs> So, Abby, uh, <laughs> she, uh, let's, let's go to Abby. What's new? Hello, Olivia. So, what, what's what's happening on the week of December 12, 2018? Um, Here's to you. Hey, Olivia. So, December 12, 2018, we have Batman Who Laughs, number one of six. Ooh, I remember that metal series. Yeah, well, it's by uh, writer Scott Snyder and artist and cover artist Jock. 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 So... Left rattled by the events of Dark Knight Metal, Bruce Wayne must keep must come face to face with the nightmares spawned from the dark multiverse. But even though evil devoured evil in the collapse of Challenger's Mountain, the Dark Knight still has his doubts. He discovered that the Batman who laughs not only survived the fight with the Joker at the end of Metal, but now he is enacting a sinister plan across the multiverse, something both terrifying and oddly familiar. But when Bruce Wayne realizes the only way to stop this mad madman is to kill him, he must consider violating the very rule Batman won't break. The same rule that created this insatiable villain, the Batman who laughs. So what's the rule that Batman won't break? Do you know? Mm. He won't kill anyone. He won't kill anyone. So what happens if you kill someone? He laughs. Oh really? Yeah. That's the idea that I know of. I haven't read Metal, but I really want to. Because... Mostly because of the Batman who laughs, because he just looks so cool. He looks like he's from Mad Max Fury Road. Mm -hmm. Like the guy who plays the guitar. Mm -hmm. I don't, you haven't seen that mm -hmm. movie, but it's a good movie. Um, Defenders, Doctor Strange. So we got part three of four, or I guess five if you count Defenders. Um, so we've had Hulk, and um, who's the other guy? Oh, um, you know what, let's see. I don't remember who the other guy is. Oh, Namor! Namor's here. His book had a lot of words, so I didn't read his. That's why I don't remember. I read part of it. Don't worry. Defenders, Doctor Strange from Marvel, obviously. Um, Jerry Dugan and Greg Smallwood. The Smallwoods do some fine work. Really? Greg and Meg? Greg and Meg. Yep. The Best Defense, Part 3. In a desolate, barren landscape, the master of the mystic arts fights what may well prove to be his final battle alone. Oh, his final battle alone, unaided, friendless, except what's in that bag that Stephen Strange is carrying with him? Mm. Wow, he has a lot of fancy tools, like the little ring, the eye of Agamemnon, Agamemnon. Question mark, maybe? Something like that. It could be another guy. Um, Doctor Strange is cool, and it's a Defenders piece. Tell me about the other one of the Defenders. Um, well, Defender Silver Surfer. Who's the fourth one? Silver Surfer? You said that. Is this a quiz? No. <laughs> What'd you ask? Oh, so you could say it when you said the title? But you already, already said, said the it. I already said late. the title. Got you. Um, wow, Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics. Look at Jason, Jason Latour, Latour doing the writing and the and artistry. The art. This is his own book. This is him. He did this. He, I made this. He made this. The Best Defense Part 4. Part 4. Shall not the judge of all the earths do right? Norinrad is not so certain. But it falls to him who is the Silver Surfer to decide which planets will live and which will feed the unending hunger of the, hunger of the world-devouring Galactus. A single honest person can tip the balance, if only the surfer can find one in time. Yeah, Selfie. Silver Surfer is quite the job. He's got to feed this, like, giant yeah. head planets and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Although I guess he's more than a head. It's uh, the other guy. Mm -hmm. Modok, who's just a head. Well, he has arms and legs, but not really. They're like that big. Okay, Fantastic Four Wedding Special. Issue 5 is here. Gail Simone and various artists. Laura Braga and various. Various is doing some, doing some, some extra work this week. Mm -hmm. You know, just call him Jason Latour, you know? <laughs> Jason Latour with helpers. <laughs> Come and celebrate the impending nuptials of The Thing and Alicia Masters with a ladies' night out, as only the first family of comics can do it. Guest starring She-Hulk, Medusa, Crystal, and more, it's the bachelorette party Alicia never expected, and one whose <laughs> rivalry... Ribble... Rivalry? Rivalry? Something like that. <laughs> Will be interrupted by the arrival of a surprise supervillain. And if you've been looking at these books, then you you might have an idea who the supervillain is because they show his face like every issue just as an ad. But you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's someone else because maybe it's a surprise supervillain. Super and no, we don't mean Johnny Storm. <laughs> Because he would, he, he's her sister, mm -hmm. so like he would crash the party yeah. kind of idea, so it's not him. He's, not him. he's a superhero, not a super villain. Meanwhile, the Thing has an unexpected meeting with his future father-in-law, the Puppet Master. Mm. He's a super villain, so we know he's not the surprise super villain. Mm. Plus, Hembic. I don't know who that is. Fake fan. Fake fan. The Fantastic Four Family Tree and more RSVP at your local comics retailer for this December and don't forget to kiss the bride. Mm. Usually it's just uh, like the thing would be the one to kiss the bride because it's his bride, but you know, I guess if you were. Um, get consent, guys, before you kiss any brides. Correct. Um, so, Goddess Mode number one for mature readers. Ooh, is this indie? What is this? this I've is, never heard of this. This is DC Comics. <laughs> Oh, I know them. Yeah. I know you do. Um, writer Zoe Quinn and artist cover artist Robbie Rodriguez. Mm. Yes. In a new future where humanity's needs are provided for by a godlike AI, it's one young woman's horrible job to do tech support on it. But mm. Cassandra Price's li life changes forever when she discovers a hidden digital world beneath our own, where a group of superpowered women are locked in a secret war for the cheat codes to reality. But that sounds intense. I wish my reality had a cheat code. I don't want to be the IT guy for God. For God. <laughs> okay, so this one's going to have a lot of mispronounced words because uh, Magic the Gathering likes to make stuff up. <laughs> that sounds hard to say, but it looks cool. Um, Magic the Gathering, Chandra, number one. Or Chandra, is that how that... I don't know. School friend? Yeah, mm -hmm. it? Okay. Shout out to Chandra. From IDW Publishing, because they do all the stuff that no one else will. Vita Ayala for writing and arting is Harvey Talibo. Something like that. Talibo. Tal Talibo. <laughs> the boundless multiverse of Magic the Gathering returns to comics. It's back, y'all. In the wake of tragic. <laughs> In the wake of tragedy, Planeswalker and Pyromancer Chandra Nalar Two A's. Is Nalar. Nalar. Strikes out on her own. On her journey, she'll have to fight against threats both old and new, as well as her own sense of guilt. Hmm. Mm. Can she overcome all of that alone? And who is that familiar face lurking in the shadows? Ooh. Cool. Well, tell me, give me something that you can pronounce, please. Okay, I can pronounce this. Mega Ghost number one of five from Albatross Funny Books. I know how to say Albatross and Funny Books. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Um, writer Gabe Soria and artist cover artist Gideon Kendall. Oh my god, you can even say that. So, can life get any weirder for junior occultist Martin Magus? Not Maggot. Magus. Magus? 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 
Living in the haunted city of Dunwick Heights is strange enough for a kid investigating the unknown, but when he comes into possession of a bewitched ring, he discovers that he now has the power to summon Mega Ghost, a giant supernatural robot sworn to defend the world against the creepy things that go smash in the night. I mean, at least he's a helpful ghost. Yeah. And also, um, even stranger, um, Mega Ghost in the title is Mega Ghost. Ghost? But then in the description, it's Mega Ghost. Like, Mega Ghost. Mega Ghost. So, yeah. We love um, uh, continuity. Yeah. Wow. Albatross Funny Books. I guess you are new. Like, <laughs> Ahoy was. But Ahoy got some good comics. I like Wrong Earth. Yeah. That's good. That's the only one I read. That's T. But I've heard the other ones were good. Tell um, me something else. Um, Miles Morales. He's back, y'all. He's back, y'all. He's back. Um, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Number one. Um. Marvel Comics. I already said that. Um, here's some things that you can't pronounce. Um, Saladin. Like, S. Aladdin. Saladin. Saladin. Ahmed. And Javi Garin, or Javi Garin, or if you pronounce it like it's in Latin, it's Iawi Garon. Garon. I think that's the correct pronunciation. Iawi. 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 Yeah, Iawi. Okay. Well, anyway, Miles Morales is balancing his normal life, school, parents, etc. Dot, dot, dot. And balancing superhero wing, superhero wing, Seriously. has never been easy. I mean, just ask um, Billy Batson, yeah, um, Moon Girl, Miss mm -hmm. um, Marvel, yeah, Miles Morales. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> this is Miles that Morales. is, <laughs> yeah. Um, Peter Parker, you know, it's hard. That is, it's a hard, it's knock a hard life. knock life. Um, it's never been easy. But when the Rhino and a Cadre? Catter? <laughs> but when the rhino and a posse of mysterious criminals start plaguing Brooklyn, things take a dark turn. Bum bum. Um. Yeah, uh. You know, they really do like distributing, uh. Daredevil. Yeah. Super villains er, to everyone else. Um, but yeah, I, I would say Moon Girl does not have to deal with a. Actually, no, I kind of think she did deal with Rhino one time. Let's change that. Billy Batson never had to deal with a guy dressed up in a giant rhino costume and a, and posse. a posse of mysterious yeah. criminals. Um, it takes a dark turn. Which yeah. is what happens when you have a guy in a giant rhino. And a posse. And a posse of mysterious criminals. Miles doesn't even know the half of it yet. Wow. It gets worse. It gets worse. So, um, um, tell me something new. I'll tell you something new. New Talent Showcase 2018 number one. I bet that's a one shot that they just put in number one instead of a one shot. Because, I mean, how many New Talent Showcases of 2018 can you get unless you, like, keep doing it into 2019, you know? Probably only one new talent so showcase. It's probably of only one, and they just put the one, and they missed out the shot because people are dumb now. Call them out. Well, this is from DC Comics. Give right. me some names you can pronounce. I can tell you some names I can pronounce. Oh, it's only one name. Only one name. Philip Kennedy Johnson, and various. And various. So there's only um, one. Um, it's just writing. No yeah. art yet. I bet that's where the various is supposed to be. Truly. But who knows? So, um, the latest graduates from the DC Talent Development Workshops show off their skills by telling stories about some of DC's greatest characters, including Batman, Catwoman, John Constantine, Wonder Woman, Satana, and more. So. I like Satana. Yeah. Yeah, she's like a magician lady. Mm-hmm. She's cool. She, like, pulls a bunny out of her head. Well, that's pretty cool. That's her bombshell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, tell me about some detectives. Detectives? Oh, like Batman? Mm, He's a detective. No. Uh, no. But, uh, what if DC had an even... Harrier. Har 
and even hairier detective. Sasquatch detective number one. Wow. I prefer to call them the Sansquanch. Sam Squanch. Sam Squanch. Like in, uh, I was about to say the Lost mm -hmm. Boys. <laughs> um, Trailer Park Boys. They say Sam Squanch. Sam like Squanch. Yeah, it's pretty funny. They're Canadian. Tell us some names you can pronounce. On um, DC Comics. Brandy Stillwell does the writing, and the arting is by Ron Randall and Gus Vasquez. Before Tonya Lightfoot, that's a Sasquatch name, became Los Angeles's most decorated detective. Okay, so she's a detective. Is she a de okay? Is um, she a detective? Uh, does she detect Sasquatch? Does she detect Sasquatches, or is she a Sasquatch who is a detective? With the name Lightfoot, I bet she's. I bet she's the latter. Sasquatch. Yes. She was okay before Tanya was a Lightfoot became a Los Angeles's most decorated detective. She was a wee Sasquatch, roaming the Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian, whatever. Google it. Duck, duck, go it. Fed a steady diet of. If you're a wee Sasquatch. Before she was a decorated detective, she was a wee Sasquatch roaming the Appalachian Mountains, fed a steady diet of tennis and golf, as both of her parents are pros at the local country club in CSI episodes. So, if you're a wee Sasquatch, are you just a hairy person? Also, like a Sasquatch midget. I think it just means a baby But Sasquatch. I don't think that's the correct term they like I don't think they like the term midget I don't know that's not very politically correct I'm sorry it's okay don't offend Sasquatches apologies um so was she like fed tennis balls and golf balls and CSI discs like like a VHS of some CSI just, episodes just throw it in her mouth like a frisbee yeah don't feed the Sasquatch. Don't feed the Sasquatch, unless it's CSI episodes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really long, really long. But her idyllic life of pranking campers and Sasquatching around the local golf course hits a bump in the fire road when Bigfoot hunters come to the dense forest. Uh oh. What's a fire road? <laughs> Would Tanya back down in the face of adversity? Not Yeti! <laughs> Get it, cause... But experiencing this abominable anti-Sasquatch sentiment <laughs> gives her the determination to leave her home behind. She heads to the dangers of the city. Bum, bum. So she doesn't, like, live in the city mm -hmm. as a detective? Well, now she go into the city. Is this all a backstory for someone who becomes a detective? <laughs> After all, it's hard to fight unconscious bias, but crime is something America's sassiest oh, well, Sasquatch is ready to tackle. So, is okay. is this like Zootopia? Oh, is Zootopia? This is Zootopia, but DC because they need new ideas. Um, I think this is an. Oh, this is my prediction. Is it's an allegory for minorities? Yeah. And like, I don't know how this works exact, egg, exactly, because her parents, I'm assuming, are also. Is this like a, like a Harry Potter? Like her parents are Muggles, but she's a wizard. Like her parents are human, but she, they gave birth to a Sasquatch. A Sasquatch. Is that why she's a wee Sasquatch? Or maybe she's just a young Sasquatch. I think because her last name is like a Sasquatch name, Lightfoot. Well, um, I mean, that would like mm -hmm. allude to her being small, small, smaller than a Bigfoot. Smaller than a Bigfoot, she's a Lightfoot. <laughs> so that that assumes that her parents are also Sasquatches. Correct. Sasquai. 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 That her parents are Sam Squanch. So, <laughs> but there are Sam Squanch. So wait, do they? You know how hunters. everyone is like, or Bigfoot hunters, not Lightfoot hunters. Okay, but that's just her last name. But my question is, they know that. Is this like they know Sasquatches exist? They just trying to get them, or are they looking for them? Is that I what the hunters that are doing? If, 
her parents are pros at the local country club and they're at least known by somebody. Yeah. So if like, they are Sasquatches. Are they like then they must Jews be and they're like hiding in a like a country club but they're like really good at the sport. They're so like they, really well known at the country part club. Of the community. But they like live in the forest next to the golf course and then like some Nazis are coming in and they're about to hunt her but little do they know that there's a Jewish detective in town. So this is like you're saying this is the That's my I don't <laughs> Sasquatch detective this is an allegory features for the Holocaust. <laughs> This special features a new 30-page lead story, plus the backup stories from Exit Stage Left, The Snagglepuss Chronicles, numbers 2 through 6. So I don't know where you can get the first one, um, although it does say 30-page lead story. <laughs> plus the backup stories. Plus backup stories number 2 through 6, so I guess maybe it's all 6? Then why didn't they just say 1 through 6? I don't know. Um... If that is not where you get the um, first story for Exit Stage Left, the Snackle Post Chronicles, I don't know where you get it. Um, tell me about something short, because that was really long. After that big long spiel, we got something short. Tell me sweet. something t I can comprehend. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you. Spawn kills everyone to number one of four. Like T-O-O? -O? Yeah, like also. Like, he also killed everyone? Yes. Like, Daredevil? Yeah. So, is this his first time? Well, um... I don't know. Tell me who writes it. Tell I'll me who tell writes you it. who, who writes it. it. The writer is Todd McFarlane, and the artist is Will Robson. So, Spawn Kills Everyone is back. Is back. He's killed everyone before. I'm sorry, y'all. All I know is that he has a big cape, and he looks like Venom. Yes. In this four-part miniseries, more cuteness, more killing, more issues. Like, 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 like issues, but also, like, like mental. Comic book issues, but, yeah. but also, like, mental, mental issues, or, like, but, daddy issues. Yeah, like, all three. Like, all three. That's a good pun. I love like that Like, when one. they said abominable. Abominable. Sentiment. And yet, yeti. They say sentiment. That's how I thought of my teacher. It's like a Jewish <laughs> Tell me something, something, uh, I'm interested in Sasquatch Detective. Yes. I am too. <laughs> okay, um, so we got Qui-Gon Jinn. He's a cool guy. Um, what about Star Wars Age Republic Darth Maul? Mm. He's, he's chill. Yeah. I'm fine with him. Um, Marvel Comics, because they do Star Wars stuff, and, um, IDW is doing their, like, kid stuff. Mm. Um, Jody Hauser and Luke Ross. Every time they have something in all caps, I will be saying it loudly. <laughs> a living weapon of rage and bloodthirst, Darth Maul has stayed in the shadows of Quarus Cant, waiting for his chance to strike against the Jedi Order. However, since tasting his first blood, the Sith Lord struggles to contain his desire for destruction and questions the wishes of his methodically plotting master. Could Maul have had another path in life, or was he always fated to follow a dark road? Guest starring Darth Sidious! Wow. My favorite part of that was the capitalized words. All the names? Yeah. Sith! That was my favorite one. Yeah. Only Sith. Oh, I, I thought your favorite was Quark Oh, Quark. Quark who's Crouton? Can. The Crouton, yeah. <laughs> um. Tell me about. Tell me about some more, um. Daredevil villains that have been passed around to other people. Well, Typhoid Fever, Iron Fist. Ooh, Ooh. Typhoid Mary, uh, slash, uh, Bloody Mary, slash, slash. Mary Walker, slash, uh, I guess regular Mary. Like the one that made Jesus? No. No. <laughs> the, so she's got like multiple personalities. Yeah. One of them is just like, hi, and the other one is like, I'll kill you, and the other one's like, I'll kill you, but worse. Oh, I and like then there's that. a third one, some that does something. I don't well, know. I'm just she not sounds like a it. lovely lady. But she's hit up Spider Man, she's hit up uh, the X Men. Mm. So now she's hitting up Iron Fist. And That's real cute. She's, she starred in the Iron Fist uh, Marvel series in season two or three. I don't know which one, but I think Iron Fist got canceled. Like all the other ones. Oh, really? <laughs> They're all canceled. <laughs> Their doubles not, though. They got another one. Though. That's good. Well, so, writer Clay McLeod Chapman and artist Paolo Villanelli. Villain? 
Ellie. Ellie Nelly. Ooh. He was born to write this. He really was. Typhoid Mary. Sorry. Or, oh, to draw this. To draw this. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Typhoid Mary is stronger than ever, and Spider-Man and the X-Men know that better. Know that better than anyone, as they've been forced to fight among themselves. As her powers grow stronger, it's only a matter of time before Typhoid Mary turns Manhattan into her, her own personal playground, if not her own personal ashtray. <laughs> Luckily, Iron Fist is in town and willing to lend a hand. Er. A fist. Because <laughs> he's got an iron fist. Yeah. But not really. Nice. It's just like magic dragon powers and he like tore out the heart of the dragon. It was pretty intense. That's pretty intense. But will the master of kung fu be able to stop the flames from spreading? Or will he just add fuel to the fire? To the fire road. Fire road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. Well, um oh that that's the last one. Um, if you noticed a cut in the middle there, that's because uh, we recorded the whole episode and then it just didn't exist. And it was our best one yet. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry if it seems like we're fake laughing, but that's because we are. Because it was funny the first time. <laughs> and now it's not. Now it's not. Hope you laugh, though. Hope you laugh. Um, so because we're new to this being just us, mm -hmm. um... We thought, what if instead of something old, something new, we just did something new, new something, something new. new. Double Ooh. new. Um, something old that is now new. Mm-hmm. You got something new that is new. Um, Shazam! Lightning bolt effect. Um, saving the world, trying to pass math class. Um, Billy Batson, if you don't know, um... I know his uh, his real origin story from 1941, I think. Mm -hmm. 42. It's one of those. Um, he says Shazam. He gets he like goes through this like he goes through the train, mm -hmm. like the under the underground the subway. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this guy just like leads this orphan boy to a a wizard. Uh, yeah. Called Sh or, I guess. Yeah, called Shazam. He gets his powers from Shazam, but his name is Shazam. So why is his name Shazam? Yeah. <sighs> um. And then, now when he says Shazam, which is an acronym, you got Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, and Mercury. So he's got, like, wisdom mm -hmm. and, like, speed and strength. So he's got, he's, like... Unbeatable. Yes. He's Squirrel Girl, okay? Oh, the original okay. Squirrel Girl? It's Shazam. Unbeatable. Um. So when this kid says Shazam, mm -hmm. he gets all these powers. He's like, becomes a superhero. Uh huh. Like a 30 year old. He just becomes 30. But he's, oh, but he's not. He, but he's like 12. 12. Gotcha. Because he like becomes this other person who still has the same personality, which is why he's Shazam has always been great. I hate calling him Shazam, his name is Captain Marvel, but they don't have the rights for that. Mm, they lost the rights back in, like, the 50s. They didn't realize it. Ah. Uh. Wow. Um, when he says it, he becomes him. And, but he's, like, a different person, but he's also, like, the same person. Mm-hmm. Because, like, Billy Batson disappears and then he shows up, so it's not like they're... They're, like, separate people. Yeah, because they, like, have different lives, and they, like, refer to each other by name, mm -hmm. instead of, like, me. So, um, he's always had, like, nice jokes for kids, because it's, like, from the point of view of a kid. Um, the movie's coming out, it looks more like he's gonna be the same person and not, like, two different people. Mm -hmm. Or, you know. Um, so, Shazam, in this reboot they change his origin story because it's kind of weird if the original one doesn't work the best um, with the name change so everyone in here they've already got all his friends already have their powers and it looks like they're gonna be working their way back through the origin story they've like just skinned it so far and that that's what the series is going to be, is them discovering what is the origin of 
Shazam. That's the phone ringing. And what gives them their powers? What does it come from? What are they for? Mm -hmm. There's like some wizard thing happening. It's pretty cool. The ending has like a little cliff. It's, it's quite the cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Nice. Um. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. Pretty cool. So, I read... Oh, and there's a bunch of jokes about, like, what he wants to be called. Oh, yeah? Like, he was like, call me Captain Mar... Dot, dot, dot. It's the lasagna! Lasagna time! You'll see if you read it. I, oh, okay. I suggest you read it. Um, but yeah, there's, they want to... Everyone has a different name for what they should be called. They're not called the Marvel family yet. Oh, really? No. But they, I mean, they are the Marvel family. Yeah. Okay, on to uh, something new that is new. Uh, so I read Snap Flash Hustle. Ooh. Um, and it was really good. So, it's about these, this girl. And she's like a model. She's like an Instagram model, right? She's trying to get some, some cash money, if you will. Um, so she sees this girl on Instagram post a picture under the hashtag, Snap Flash Hustle, right? Mm -hmm. And she's, and the girl gets a lot of likes. And she's like, wow, like, that could be me. So she takes some pictures, and she posts them under that hashtag, right? For you who do not understand Instagram, um, you can follow a hashtag like you yes. would a person. So when someone uses that hashtag, they will show up on that person's feed, even if they do not follow that person. So that can help you expand your brand. Yes. So she does that. And, like, right away she gets someone that, like, contacts her and wants to do a photo shoot. So she's like, heck yeah. So get that money. Get that cash money. So she goes and she does the photo shoot and um, this guy offers her a bag of cocaine. Extraneous pharmaceuticals? Yes. Whoa. And she's like, what the, what the heck is this, right? She was not expecting this. She wasn't expecting this. So then he was like, what the heck? So, um, she's like, so everyone's like, what the heck? You know, like, why? And so there's this big confusion, and turns out that the hashtag SnapFlashHustle is like kind of a front for a drug deal, and these um, these Instagram models kind of like use this as a way to transport and deal their... So they're not sitting on blocks, they're sitting on drugs. Drugs. Ooh. Ooh! Ooh. So they're like, dude, this is what we do, but like, mm. and she's like, okay, well... Can I be a part of it? And they're like, I don't know, maybe. And she really needs that money. She needs that money. So that's where it ends. It's really good. I like the art a lot. I read it. Can confirm is really good. Yeah, I would follow these Instagram models. Yes. And, and their beautiful faces. I would um, like to continue reading it. It is mature, but I'm but you're a legal adult. Yes. You are mature. Yes, I am mature. You can drive. That's all it takes to be mature. That's all it takes to be mature. Oh, you, you just have to drive. So I guess that's us. This. That's this. That's this. That's, that's the end of our show. This is our outro. Welcome to the outro. Uh, welcome. Um, this is us saying goodbye. <laughs> um, be sure to check out our Facebooks and our. I think we only have the one Twitter. The Twitter. Um, we don't have other stuff I don't think. We might. We have a website. We have a website. We have physical locations and phone numbers. They're landlines if you <laughs> work oh. old school. Retro. Um be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And, and ring also, that bell. Ring that bell. So like you hit you know by the subscribe button. You hit the bell. The bell. It'll be on that part. It's like down check it out um you want it so that it's got like the little lines around it so it looks like it's like ringing mm -hmm. like moving lines like you see in a comic book you should you should know that you should know that you don't want the line going through it because that means that you won't get any notifications and that's bad and yeah no you want a notification because yeah we post every week but we don't always post at the same time mm -hmm. or on the same day so that bell really helps yeah I have the bell turned on. I get a notification every time. Maybe I should turn on the bell. Yeah, that's your homework. It's my homework. And you know what else is your homework? 
keep reading good comics. Because why would you read a bad why comic? Why would you read the bad When you could read a good one. Mm. Okay, so. Alrighty. Um, you got your homework. And, um, yeah, read good comics.